When it comes to efficiency, we're looking at the useful parts of an airplane. I know that sounds strange, like what part of an aircraft isn't useful. Well, on the remote control scale, as long as you design the control surfaces correctly, you can do pretty well. The wings, for example, are useful because they provide the lift. Other surfaces, such as the fuselage and the tail, only contribute to the drag. Let's take a look at a common design, uh, the Easy Star. On first glance, we see that the ailerons and elevators basically perform the same functions, so we can get rid of the elevator section, which saves a ton of weight. Remember, as you cut down on the bulk items your RC plane has, you're still going to have more control since there's less bulk. Another thing what we can get rid of is the fuselage, uh, given that the battery is of the right size. While the fuselage may have an aerodynamic shape, it still contributes to the drag. Unless you make the fuselage a part of the main airfoil, which is our goal. If you have the right airfoil, most parts can be fit inside the airfoil. This drastically reduces the drag you would have if you put your receiver and battery on top of the airfoil. The winglets are worth keeping since they increase stability and reduce wingtip vortices which cause increased drag. So keep in mind, the only control surfaces we are interested in keeping are the elevons, since they will serve the same purpose as the elevator and ailerons. Flaps are sometimes necessary if you have a very large RC plane or you want cool flight dynamics but they don't contribute to the increased efficiency. The servos add weight and the flap surfaces uh, disturb the laminar airflow over the airfoil. So far, we've eliminated most of the fixed wing designs like the Bixler and Easy Star, which leaves us with the choice for the most efficient RC aircraft design, the flying wing. With the flying wing, your entire surface area, with the exception of the winglets, is contributing to the lift, so there is not any part of the aircraft that is causing just drag. Additionally, your engine is mounted directly to the airfoil and it doesn't need its own mount. Most of the flying wings can go for an hour minimum of flight and they're pretty easy to learn to fly. Since there are only two control surfaces, the learning curve for a flying wing is much easier than say for a Bixler. Additionally, since your entire control surface is a wing, you can perform flips and other stunts and you can regain control quite easily. Oftentimes with the fixed wind aircraft, the elevator and rudder lose their ability to control the aircraft during a stall. This can lead to some very serious consequences, since having no control during a stall may cause the plane to enter into an uncontrollable dive. With a flying wing, this isn't an issue. On a flying wing, your ailerons are farther out on the wing surfaces. So, during a stall, some portions of the ailerons will still have a smooth laminar flow going over them. This allows you to regain control very easily and prevent the flying wing from crashing.